This is Federalist number eight by Alexander Hamilton. So in Federalist eight, Alexander Hamilton talks about the consequences of hostilities between the states. Um, he argues that disunion will only open opportunities toward jealousy, animosity, and war between the states that a general union would be apt to prevent. Uh, it's a continuation of his arguments from Federalist number seven. Europe, throughout her long and storied history of war and militarism, it's become accustomed to conflict, and it's built many fortifications in every country uh, and that can halt the invasion of an army. They have batteries along the coasts and so on. So this martial culture with professional armies, places like Britain, Prussia, Austria, Russia, uh, it focuses not on conquest or destruction necessarily, as European wars have been about relatively small advancements and concessions, but America has virtually no fortifications at this point, at least none that would be able to uh, fully halt an invading force, given the undeveloped openness of the borders between the states. So this distance and lack of professional infrastructure would likely lead to wars that involve irregular and unprofessional armies and violent skirmishes, which would most likely destroy towns as opposed to occupy them. If war really did break out, the more populous states would plunder and devastate those that are less populous. A national force would be far more able to save its member states from external threats uh, without such a union in each state becoming less safe. Uh, and this lack of safety would drive the people of the states to give up more of their rights and liberties to a stronger militaristic force to compensate. And this means not only will people be less safe, but also less free. This concern is that of standing armies, which the Constitution under review may allow. That's the controversial point here. However, without the Constitution and the Union it secures, there will undoubtedly be many standing armies in the states as the states scramble to militarize themselves and strengthen their executive institutions at the expense of their legislature. Just as what happened in the old world, which is riddled with a plethora of despots and tyrants. The civil cultures of the past degrade and are replaced by military cultures due to persistent war or even just the persistent threat of war. Hamilton brings up the example of Britain. Since it's an island with a strong navy, uh, the internal situation is relatively peaceful, and so their army is limited to militias. If England was connected to the continental part of Europe, then the situation would be completely different and its army would be inflated to such a degree that people's liberties would be far more limited than how they might be now. And this is one cause of relative British liberty as opposed to the liberty of other peoples in other nations. A union would have the same advantages similar to that of England's insulated situation, given our distance to the violence of Europe and their remaining colonies in the Americas uh, are no serious threat to us. An overextended military establishment is not necessary for uh, national security given the size of the Union at this point, uh, so long as individual states are not threats to one another. And that concludes Federalist 8 by Alexander Hamilton. My name is Evan. I do a bunch of things here at Amending America, but it's primarily being the moderator of our Discord and our social media, and I also do a little bit of our graphics and our web design. This is by far the biggest project that we have undertaken here at Amending America. Mark and I are doing full readings and summaries, respectively, of all, yes, all of the Federalist Papers. We are super excited and feel super ambitious about this project, and we're so glad that we can introduce it to you for free. Thank you so very much, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.